Honestly, I didn't think gushing over magical girls had it in them, but with episode 4, they did something that even I was a little surprised by, and honestly, for three weeks now, I've been coming up here just bamboozled by how this got to air on TV. But what I mean is, they actually made a pretty tame episode. Sure, you do have the intro of the episode, and it's basically the classic Reki Kawahara groping scene and covered in slime and tentacles. Yeah, I guess that's a little intense, and sure, even the main magical girl pretty much gets stripped down to the point that she has to slap heart-shaped patches over every private area, because otherwise Utna's just gonna, well, doesn't matter if there's kids in the crowd, she's gonna strip you down for her own pleasure. So, there's a couple of, I guess, spicy moments, but when you compare the first three episodes, shit, th this one seems PG-13 to me. Honestly, I'm surprised, and honestly, it's kind of a nice change of pace. Sure, we're like two or three episodes away from full-blown penetration and no one can convince me otherwise. That's gonna happen. It's just a matter of time. So degenerate that all she does is read her erotic magazines now when she's supposed to be studying. And in her free time, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a playground, she's gonna strip those magical girls clean. We are very close to full-blown SEX and it's gonna happen. Maybe not in an episode or two, but it's gonna happen. And honestly, whether or not this is the best or worst magical girl anime, it's really up for you to decide. There's one thing I think most of us who are watching this show can agree on. Damn is it interesting. It does have a very interesting mechanic for its fights, like just casually slapping a pair of scissors and having it be a dozen of those. Even if it leads to stripping down magical girls to their birthday suit, at the end of the day, the way they manipulate their powers is actually really cool. Soul for having probably my favorite abilities we've seen. I mean, she's just a absolute human tank. She can be a shield to protect you from seemingly anything as long as her mana keeps up, or she can turn into giant Hulk smasher gloves where she pummels the living shit out of you. It's just so cool to see how they continue to make this show actually interesting on a combat level, as they just have peak degeneracy week after week. Now, the full live reaction to today's Gushing Over Magical Girls episode over on my Patreon, so if you'd like to see my full look of thoughts there over there, if you're interested. This was easily the tamest of the episodes, but I think it was important because it allowed us to catch our breaths, not be just like, seriously, did they just show that again? They definitely baited us last week with the whole love hotel. I thought that was actually going to be like the intro to the episode. I guess that's probably just going to be an ongoing gag with the two of them. Kiwi's just going to try to drag her ass into the love hotel and... Eventually, she's not going to be able to deny her. Maybe that's when the whole full-blown SEX is going to occur, but either way. What we end up having is the Magical Girls kind of, like, try to figure out what the hell is wrong with their villain. Because, obviously, the main girl out of the Magical Girls is like, hey, I'm going to go challenge her by myself. And she does it not once, but twice. And her friends are pretty much like, girl, why would you do this by yourself? I think it's a mixture of, honestly, curiosity, but also her main thing was that she needs to figure out, is she actually trying to defeat us? which is a good point to have because ultimately she, even if like our girl wins, like Utna seemingly defeats them, she still disappears. She never like does a killing blow. She always leaves them around so that she can continue to um, well do her naughty teasing. And the fact that, you know, this whole point was like to figure it out because the first time that she gets jumped, she can't do anything, right? Like she's just completely embarrassed. She can't move a muscle without flashing innocent bystanders. And yeah, I mean, unless you want Chris Hansen knock on your door, you probably don't want to do it to those elementary kids there. I love the fact that pretty much after that, she says, you know what? I'm going to go in prepared. And to her defense, she actually managed to keep covered up a good amount, even if it was, uh... A little more exposed than even I think I'd be willing to accept. I mean, yeah, she's covering up the main parts, but, like, she's still naked, and she had no shame, so props to her. She's able to combat our girl, because Una is an absolute menace to society, and honestly, I think at this point they should always have those on, because otherwise, you know, like, every other scene, like, whether they're transforming, whether they get one attack from some scissors, like, they have no outfit on within two minutes of an episode, so just keep things covered up, maybe get some adamantium patches so they can't be ripped off either, but you know what, it is what it is. The thing that I like is that this episode really let the combat kind of be the main thing that stood out rather than just look at this erotic scene or look at this nudity. The ending fight was really, really cool. Like I said, I think Sulphur's probably my favorite character that we've seen out of this cast. 
just because like I like her personality from what I saw especially in this episode but her abilities also seem the most interesting there's like I love the fact that it's not even simply just about the fan service being like damn I wasn't expecting that for an anime the subs themselves too and the dialogue is also pretty spicy like they'll just be dropping f-bombs and saying oh that's a bitch or this or that and it's just like it's usually unexpected enough that I'm like oh shit I forgot they actually get a little spicy with their dialogue and I think it helps because when you're dealing with such nonsense and an absurdity the character should probably be a little salty at the end of the day. And I like that Sulphur's kind of like hatred and rivalry and just, you know, feistiness. It goes beyond just the magical girl side of things. It also is relating to Kiwi in their school and uh, that chess comment scene, the argument, very funny stuff. And honestly, it was nice to see a bit more about the magical creature side in terms of like who gave them their abilities. We've only really seen it from Utna's side with this like floating black cube, and now we get to see the white heart-shaped one who apparently is like the good one who gives all the magical girls their abilities. And apparently they want to bring the other one back to their fold because, you know, stop walking the bad path and he's saying, bitch, please, I'm going to make a degenerate and you can't stop me. I like the concept that the reason we really haven't seen theirs this entire time is that it manages so many magical girls. And because they've been so successful, he hasn't really had to worry about them because they're usually pretty A-OK. -okay. That is until the degenerate known as Utna got introduced and kind of like uh, flipped everything on their head. The casual reveal that apparently the entire reason we got the last fight at the end of this episode was because the generator got hit by a car, which is their protective barrier, and their little mascot was too stupid to like warn them about that is pretty hilarious. But honestly, we're like, what, maybe one to three episodes away before maybe a majority of the Magical Girls, because we already have one that's already into the kink play. We're just like, we need one or two more episodes to maybe get the main girl a little more okay with it. Because if she's already okay, like, fighting pretty much naked with just a couple of patches, she's going to be pretty okay with being full-on nude pretty soon. And honestly... I think I said it like two videos back, give or take. I think maybe I said in episode two's video, maybe I said episode one, I don't remember. Eventually there's gonna come a point where the magical girls are gonna be fighting and definitely trying to defeat Utna, but really they're just gonna come to a point where they're gonna pretend to fight because they just enjoy the chaos that they do. And honestly, this show is one or three episodes away from full-on penetration. I don't think anyone can convince me otherwise. Every fetish in the book, every situation is going to occur the thing that I thought they were going to do this episode was more blood play and cutting because they had the scissors and everything. Surprisingly, they didn't. They went pretty tame. Like, there's a couple of spicier moments, but when you compare the first three episodes, this shit was tame. And honestly, I'm not complaining. It was a nice change of pace. The action was more relevant. We got some more interesting ideas with the world building. Nothing too crazy, but with the magical creatures, what they do and their plans. But most importantly, we got to focus on the Magical Girls more than just them being whipped and chained up, even if they still had that a little bit in this episode. To be honest, I actually think this is one of my favorite episodes of this show. I'm not saying it's my overall top one, but it's like my second favorite episode for sure of this show. It was just a nice change of pace, and I'm excited to see how Degenerate is probably going to start off next week, and how quickly it's going to spiral into peak degeneracy very soon. Let me know what you thought of this week's episode of Gushing Over Magical Girls down below. Leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell so you get notified when I upload more. And like I mentioned, we have a full live reaction over on my Patreon, and hey, while you're over there, you also get a video shout out. So today, we have Derek Nickel, Trap Senpai, Pokemon 222-888, and Sharon. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.